Hello everyone, it is April and today I'm very, very happy to be sitting here with you to chat about the very best books I've read thus far in 2022. These are the best of the best. I've had an incredible reading year so far. I've got 15 books to share with you. Now, I feel like we need a round of applause for me or something because I have ranked these books um, in order of how much I've loved them. So I don't know how I did it, but here we are and I need to share these with you. So let's dive in. Coming in at number 15, we have Intimacies. This is a really beautiful work of fiction. It is a translated book. I definitely want to read more translated fiction. And this follows a woman who is a translator. She is an interpreter, essentially. And she works alongside other interpreters and they all help um, to interpret the language um, and to also translate. Um, and in her case, she is interpreting for a past president who inflicted a horrible, horrible torture um, on his country and his countrymen. And so she is interpreting for him. And it's so interesting because she's the only person in the room who understands what he is saying. And the, the tiny inflections in language um, that can impact what someone is trying to get across. And she, that's her job is to get that across to the courts. It's very interesting. So we follow her in this professional setting. And then we also follow her in her own personal life, you know, trying to make friends in a country that is not her own. And she is trying to do that. However, um, there are terrible things going on. People are being attacked in neighborhoods around her. And so she's also struggling with that. I just thought how this author explored language and inflections and all of those things and translations um, to show how intimate language is. I had never really thought about that before. It was beautiful. I really loved it. I highly recommend it. Next up, we have The Bass Rock by Evie Wilde. This book explores how men over centuries have been violent towards women. We follow three women of three different time periods. One woman, I think in the 1300s, is being accused of being a witch and she's fleeing for her life. We follow a woman named Sarah in the midst of World War II who is adjusting to a new life with a new husband um, and living with him. And then we follow a woman in present day who is actually going to stay at that woman's house, uh, it, the World War II woman's house, Sarah, um, because I believe they're related. And her experience with men being violent towards women. And it is, I would say, a really good book to read right now, considering um, the absolute insanity that our world is seeing um, with hate towards women and women's bodily autonomy and all of those things that you guys know um, exist at this moment that is truly horrific to me, like truly horrific. Um, I think this book is a really good one to read at this moment. So I loved it. The Bass Rock is coming in at number 14. Number 13 is Graham Norton's Homestretch. I have only loved everything that Graham Norton has written and this book is no exception to the rule. Um, this follows Connor. Um, in 1987, he is in a car with a group of people um, who are, I believe, all involved in a wedding. Um, there is a terrible car crash and several people in the car die. Uh, Connor lives, another person lives as well, um, but it's very hard to live in a small town where people look at you and immediately are thinking about their loved ones who have died. So he ends up leaving promptly um, to go and stay, I think in Dublin, no, Liverpool. He, mo he moves to Liverpool first and then London. Uh, trying to run away from this past 
this was addictive. I listened to this on audio and the dynamic between Connor and his family, in particular his sister, I really loved that dynamic. Um, I was very annoyed by her at times and then a more understanding of her. The entire time you are rooting for Connor and you feel really very, very um, protective of Connor. I adored this book. Please read it. I love Graham Norton. Oh my goodness. So much. Number 12 is In the Garden of Beasts by Eric Larson. I love Eric Larson's nonfiction work about um, historical events. I mean, that is kind of what he does. Um, but he's written books about, you know, uh, ships sinking and that kind of thing. And those are interesting. However, his work surrounding World War II is fascinating. And this is one of those books. We follow a man named William Dodd, who becomes America's first ambassador to Hitler's Germany in 1933. As Hitler is rising to power, and you're watching the change, the remarkable, terrifying change that occurs in Germany. Now, he doesn't go alone. He actually brings his daughter, who is an adult daughter. She's ending uh, a marriage uh, by basically running away. And so you follow him in this setting and also her. And she kind of gets quite swept away with Hitler and his regime. She meets him. Um, and it's really fascinating. I absolutely was riveted by this book and so interested. So yeah, I, I definitely want to read more by Eric Larson. I've got The Devil in the White City, which I think is what he's most well known for. Uh, but I'd like to read more of that historical World War II, World War I books. If there are any more, let me know in the comments below if you know of any more. I've read The Splendid and the Vile, which was incredible, but yeah, loved this book. Number 11 is Stay With Me. This was an incredibly heartbreaking book. Um, this follows a woman living in Nigeria, and she is married to a man. They have decided together that their marriage will remain closed. Um, there is a custom in Nigeria that a man can have more than one wife. Um, however, they are dealing with infertility and his parents decide that he's gonna have another wife so that he can have a child. And so this other wife is randomly brought into their marriage. And it is about the impact of that, about her struggling to conceive and struggling to have a child. It is so heartbreaking and infuriating. Again, a book where you feel incredibly protective of her. Um, I love books where you are rooting for the main character so much that you actually feel protective and you feel like if they say anything, I'm going to insert like violent act here. <laughs> you know? I I think that's so incredible when a writer can achieve that and absolutely she does in this book. It was wonderful. I'm so glad I finally read it. I will say a hard book to read for anyone who's gone through infertility, miscarriage, any of the above. Uh, I found it triggering and hard uh, but also good to read. So in any case, I just thought I would mention that to you. Next, we have The School for Good Mothers. This was a kind of dystopian world in which parents are being tracked and punished for how they parent their children. In this case, we meet a woman named Frida who has a toddler and she is most recently divorced. Um, this was not her choice in any way, shape or form. Her husband has left her for another woman. Um, and so she has this child. And during the time that this child is under her supervision, she ends up doing a very stupid thing, which is leaving the child in her little like bounce a do thing and going to the office to pick something up. She thinks she's gonna be 15 minutes. She ends up being a couple of hours. Just, we all know that that was not a good idea. We all know that. No one needs to tell us that is a good idea. 
we know it's not. However, she ends up having to go to this school for good mothers to try and fight to get her child back. And some of the things that they make them do is just bizarre. Uh, I was furious throughout this book and and it felt, it really did feel like a dystopian book. It was a dystopian book. It felt like a dystopian book. I ended up really enjoying it. Um, so yes, highly recommend. I mean, obviously I recommend all of these books. They're my favorites of the year. Number nine is Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead. This is a book about a woman who wants to fly. Um, it takes place in the early-ish 1900s. And of course, at this time, uh, women aren't encouraged to fly. Flying is a kind of new thing that's going on in the world and women are not encouraged. And the women that do fly end up having very wealthy husbands um, who support their you know, wives' passions for flying. And so our main character has a passion for flying. However, she has grown up quite poor. She does meet a man who is a terrible human being who does encourage her to fly, but also holds it against her and holds it over her head. I ended up really, really enjoying this book. Uh, I found our main character so fascinating. Number eight is Magpie by Elizabeth Day. I recently read this and really enjoyed it. This follows a couple, Marissa and Jake. Um, they are trying to have a child and they move into this new home that they can't really afford and they needed to take a lodger in. And that lodger's name is Kate and it seems perfect at first, but then Kate starts asking strange questions, very imposing questions and Marissa finds it really overbearing and very uncomfortable. And she starts to suspect Kate and Kate's intentions. This is a, a gripping thriller. It has twists and turns, but it is so much more character-based um, and about the dynamics between the characters than anything else. I wouldn't say read this if you want like a major page turner, although I read this really quickly. Um, I loved, of course, the exploration of infertility and going through IVF treatments. That was all in here and I was like, yep, did that. It was, it's so interesting when you've gone through IVF, when you read about it, um, you can tell Elizabeth Day has had experience with infertility and IVF, or she did a very, very thorough um, job researching about it because it felt very familiar. And I think that's why it's so high up on my list. Number seven is Still Life, which I thoroughly enjoyed. I don't own this book. One day I will own this book. It was so wonderful. This follows a man who goes to war and we meet him along with an, an older woman uh, who meet at a, a winery while the bombs are dropping and they have this night of just talking and opening up about themselves to one another and they really impact one another's lives and you follow the progression of their friendship. You also follow, I believe his name was Ulysses, um, going back home and his friends back home. It's such a beautiful story about friendship. I, I found it really moving. Um, I just, I loved it. There are characters in here that hurt each other within the friendships, but they're still loyal to one another. And I just, it was a really beautiful, beautiful book. Number six is Falling Angels by Tracy Chevalier. This follows a group of kids in the early 1900s. One of them is a grave digger's son. Um, the two girls in this uh, book are neighbors uh, and one of their parents um, is involved in the women's rights movement. And it follows all of these characters in this time trying to sort out a path for themselves, um, trying to enjoy their childhood, and also really trying to understand their parents and their parents' actions. I really loved this book. It felt like a very dark version of Anne of Green Gables. Um, 
because the kids, the way the kids interact with each other is very much like how Anne would act with Diana and Gilbert Blythe. You know, it felt like that, but darker. I really enjoyed this one and I love Tracy Chevalier and this is not the only Tracy Chevalier on this list. Number five is Finding Me by Viola Davis. So Viola Davis is a famous actress and for very good reason, but I did not know her story and her history and how she grew up. And this is an incredibly vulnerable book about her childhood uh, being incredibly, incredibly poor with like rats chewing the faces off of her dolls as a child. Like this was how she grew up. And the abuse that she experienced and witnessed as a child, you also follow her following in love with acting. I, you know, when I reviewed it, I said, like, I think some people kind of fall into acting and I think some people are born to act. I think Viola Davis is born to act because it kind of saved her in a lot of ways and gave her something to dream for and work towards. And I just, I really have a newfound appreciation for Viola Davis, I really, really enjoyed this book. I would definitely recommend listening to it on audio because she narrates it herself. Number four is A Ladder to the Sky by John Boyne. This is an addictive book, infuriating book, about a man who wants to become a writer. He's actually a very good writer, but he struggles with plot and finding plots that are interesting. And so he ends up following around several different writers throughout the course of this book and uses them in one way or another to get plots. Morris is one of the most unlikable characters I've ever met. Uh, and he's our main character. And yet I could not stop reading. I needed to know who he was going to victimize next. Uh, and it turns out a lot of people, like a lot of people, it was fascinating. And uh, I found the ending really satisfying, which is a nice feeling, very satisfying ending. And I loved A Ladder to the Sky. Oh my goodness, we're getting down to the end now. Coming in at number three is The Likeness by Tana French. Now this is the second in the Dublin Murder Squad series. I will say, I feel like we can just start insert the Dublin Murder Squad series into this third ranking because I'm obsessed guys. Like it makes me so, so happy that I have a detective series that I love. The Likeness for me is my favorite of the three that I've read thus far. Um, it follows a woman who is a detective. She had previously worked undercover and they have found a dead body of a woman who looks exactly like her and is going by the name of uh, the character that they made up for uh, our main character um, when she was undercover. So this dead body is, go is basically her undercover self dead. And so she infiltrates this dead woman's life. And to find out essentially who killed this woman, why they killed this woman, and so on and so forth, I thought it was brilliant. I think this is many people's least favorite of the Dublin Murder Squad, but I adored it. So yeah, insert the Dublin Murder Squad series here. I freaking love it. Number two is Sorrow and Bliss. My goodness, this is a wonderful book. It is a funny book at times. It will make you very sad at times. This follows a woman who has a mental illness. Now, the mental illness is never explicitly told to us. We don't know exactly what it is. It just goes by the word X throughout the book. Now, she is struggling with this mental illness her entire life and only really re discovers what it is um, towards the end of the book. And it follows her grappling with this illness of hers um, throughout her childhood, um, through uh, her marriage, um, which is really struggling in this book. Uh, and it, it follows her 
with the people that love her the most and you know that includes her husband and her sister I loved all of the all of the scenes with her and her sister because they had such a strange upbringing they kind of became this little like gang that unto themselves like this duo that could never be messed with really and I I really loved that it it you know it definitely reminded me in a lot of ways of me and my sister you know and how close we've been in our lives and 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 how things you know pop into your lives that kind of mess around with that and 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 trying to discover yourself and your place in the world and I just loved it I found her incredibly infuriating at times. She is cruel to her husband a lot of the time, but, and I got very angry when she was doing these horrible things. But when you realize that it is the mental illness doing it and not her, it's so interesting. And, and I think it's an important book to read um, to understand mental, mental illness a bit better. So I loved Sorrow and Bliss so much. It was actually very hard to pick between Sorrow and Bliss and my number one book, which we will get to next. But at the end of the day, the first book that I read um, in 2022 has been my favorite book. And that is A Single Thread by Tracy Chevalier. Um, this follows Violet. After the First World War, her fiancé dies in the First World War and she becomes a surplus woman, essentially a woman who has no man to take care of her. Uh, she is a single woman and she's trying to move on with her life. She has no prospects of marrying and she ends up getting a job. She lives on her own. Um, she volunteers to, uh, I think, crochet or sew at a cathedral she's embroidering um kneelers and those kinds of things along with a bunch of other women who are also single and it's about the people that she meets along the way um there are potential romances that come up here but there are also dangers that emerge um the men that are left um some of them are absolutely beautiful men and some of them are nasty nasty men who aim to inflict uh terrible things upon the women and uh she deals with that a lot in this book i was actually terrified in this book at times but the the stories of friendship between some of these women was just so awesome i loved it i loved it loved it loved it cannot recommend it more. I want to read every Tracy Chevalier on earth. That's it. Those are my absolute favorite books that I've read in 2022 so far. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite book has been so far. I'd love to know if you can't choose one, just do like a top three. That's okay. The more suggestions to other people, the better, in my opinion. I hope you guys are doing well and I will talk with you very soon. Bye.